Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove a radio from a Nissan Qashqai. This is a 2015 model and I'm going to show you how to remove this and I'm also going to give you all the part numbers for what you might need if you're going to install a double DIN radio into this vehicle. So let's start right there with all the accessories that you're going to need. First up, we have the fascia kit. Now this kit is basically contains everything you're going to need to convert from this sort of shape to the normal radio shape. So this is made by Kinex 2, this particular one, and it's a CT23 NS20. And as you can see, Nissan Qashqai 2014 onwards. Now these do come in different colors. This is a gloss black dashboard on this particular vehicle. So we have a gloss black trim. There we go, gloss black. Like I say, they do come in silvers and titanium colors and all sorts, so make sure you order the correct one. You also get like a... As well as the pocket adapter if you're using a single DIN radio, it comes with these brackets. These are so you can mount the radio in the vehicle. Uh, they're quite substantial, as you can see. You can sort of angle them. They've got slide slots, so you can line the radio up nicely with the spacious so it sits flush. You also get a pack of these little yellow clips. Now, when you get these, you have to sort of pop them on clip them onto here get some spare ones so it's a full kit very good very very nice fit one of the best you're probably going to get in fact from uh, my experience let's have a look at the other bits if your vehicle doesn't have steering controls or you're not bothered about them working so if you've got volume on your steering wheel and stuff and you're not bothered about that this is your connector ct20 ns05 and it basically plugs from the nissan plug to what's called uh, industry standard connectors. Yeah, they're little ISO blocks there and they plug into pretty much any radio on the market. Nice and simple, does the job. If you need a steering wheel con connector adapter, you're gonna have to contact your retailer or online distributor that you're gonna go with because there's numerous different options for this vehicle depending on your steering wheel configuration and year. You're also gonna need an aerial adapter. So there's a Nissan DIN adapter, that's a CT27AA75, again connects two and it plugs basically from the square plug of the Nissan to the normal DIN plug that you find in the back of radios. The blue wire here with the fly-off uh, basically connects to the blue wire coming out the back of your new radio. Okay, let's have a look how we get this radio out. First things first, you're going to need a pry tool. Don't use a screwdriver, it'll definitely leave nasty big dints in your trim, you don't want that, it's going to look horrendous. Get yourself a plastic leverage tool. Uh, you can normally buy them in packs from eBay, Amazon, car shops for about a pound or nothing, no big deal. They're just quite firm plastic. And what we're going to do is start by levering. If I can get this to come out with one handed. Oh, there we go. Pop. No, not quite. There we go. So we pull that out all the way along, guys, and it reveals the bolt set at the back there. You can see that. And then we're going to go down to this area. There we go. Do the same on the other side. We sort of pull this forwards. There you go. And some clips up. And that also reveals some mounting bolts. One, two, to take the radio out. Now we're going to remove this piece of trim. Easiest way to do this is to just put your thumb and finger here and sort of pull and then put your leverage tool here to pop the top clip. You can see it's all on mounting clips there. Look, just take that out of the way. Revealing, I can get the camera on it, that bolt there, which you're going to undo. Again, it's the last removal bolt. So you've got one there, one here, one here, and then the other one buried back there. Next up, you're going to pull your radio forward. On each corner, it does have these spring-loaded mounting lugs, so you're going to give it a bit of a tug there. When, you, when you're up in the corner, you put your fingers behind it and sort of pull. Everything comes out. Put a rag or something over your gear lever and centre console because it's steel, and it'll obviously scratch it all. You don't want that. I tend to leave the heater area that we've pulled out, by the way, the lower section plugged in, and it's because it's got the sensor for the passenger airbag, and if you accidentally turn the ignition on, with these wires unplugged that go to the heater area, you'll have a warning light to deal with and you don't want that. So last of all, what we're gonna do is squeeze these pins and pull and your power connector, speaker connector, etc., all come out. And there we go. With that out of the way, we were left with the bare plugs that you can plug all your adapters and such like into to get the new radio in. So what I'll do, I'll do a couple of short takes where I'm sort of at 
uh, various stages of putting the new radio in to give you a couple of tips and clues on how that happens. So carry on watching for that. First update guys, ISO plug plugged in, microphone ran, USB cable ran to the glove box. There we go, all nice and tidy. There's the blue wire I was on about that goes to your aerial adapter. There you go, so that's just patched in there a lot. And you've also got a power for a DAB aerial on the particular radio I'm fitting, so that's why you've got sort of two coming off here. But there's the plug that plugs into the radio. All nice and neat and tidy so that nothing gets caught. Second update, we now have the side brackets on. There you go, you've got your two screws there diagonally from each other. You can put four in there as extra holes, etc. This is twistable, so you can adjust it to make the screen angle correctly to the plastic fascia. So before you bolt it into the car tight, what you want to do is just dummy it up, slide it onto the notches, put the radio in, put the plastic fascia over, and make sure it's sitting flush and nice. So you can always take it back out and twist these and adjust them to make it sit nice. So everything's plugged in the back there, as you can see. And then when you've done that, it's quite literally, tuck all your wires, of course, deeply out of the way there, down out of the way so they don't get trapped. And we can, there we go, pop it in like so and put a mounting screw in to hold it in place. There we go. Now, like I was saying about the angling, this is going to come up slightly. We're going to pivot it because this corner is a bit further in than this corner. But you get the general idea of how this fits together, and then the rest of it is a reversal of how you removed it. Okay, we're nice and flush. Quick ignition check. Make sure everything's working. If it powers up, etc. There we go. Jobs are good. And this piece in first, so it clicks in as such, like so, because we need this mounting lug here for this lower one here to click into and then we're going to lift this bit hook it under push all the way around and that's it guys you've successfully fitted your radio thanks a lot for watching any questions contact your retailer bye for now